Hey guys, out to Marco here, and this is going to be your Thursday video report. Doing it outside today. I think the last time I did an outside video for you, I was atop of a mountain in Lake Tahoe in the middle of July, and I think it was actually actually warmer then, even though we were almost 9,000 feet above sea level than it is today. Of course, today I'm over in Pennsylvania. Every week I have to fly back because I do uh, Daily News Live on Philadelphia's Comcast, and I've got to be live in studio on Friday, so naturally I'm back here today. And I mean, believe it or not, this is actually a beautiful day for the Pennsylvania area where the temperature is going to be an unseasonably warm 60 degrees. And today, truth be told, back in Vegas, it's actually not as nice. Uh, I looked at the uh, forecast it says it's going to be 60 degrees and very windy the difference being uh, a couple of days from now as soon as this weekend you know it's going to be back to the normal highs here in Pennsylvania highs probably about 52 53 on average and at night you know it freezes you freeze your ass off we're opposed to Las Vegas where by next Tuesday it'll be a nice balmy 72 degrees again normal highs this time of year on the high 60s low 70s but of course you know Vegas does have its downside you know I personally love the dry heat I mean you know send me to Vegas send me to Phoenix in the middle of uh, summer I'm I'm off for it. And truth be told, you know, really from March until really this time of year, the weather is beautiful out there, but it does get cold in Vegas. You're surrounded by mountains. People don't realize that. It gets chilly. You know, you've got to be wearing a coat throughout the month of December and January. But of course, the payback is that you have those beautiful months the rest of the year. Uh, enough of the weather dissertation. Uh, today, of course, being Veterans Day. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, it's another one of those holidays that people, this day and age in our society, people forget what its true intent is to honor those that have served in our armed forces defending this country of ours. Uh, those that have passed away, those that are currently involved in various conflicts, you know, instead so many people look at Veterans Day as a great day to save 20% shopping at Macy's or, you know, their inconvenience because they can't run to the bank because it's closed or over to the post office to buy a book of stamps because it's closed. They forget the true intention of this day and what it was created for and that really is sad and it's just a statement and a commentary on our society I know myself you know I didn't serve in the armed forces my father did uh, lied about his age like so many men did back in that day uh, to join the Marines um, and uh, was shipped off to Korea for the Korean War which many people unjustly still call a conflict as if uh, lives being put at risk and those being killed uh, didn't uh, justify it being called a war as World War I and World War II. But then again, look at what happens now. You know, the Gulf War skirmishes and war back in the 90s. Our current military uh, escapades over in Afghanistan and Iraq. You know, people just kind of go on with their everyday life and they, they forget about it. And that is very, very unfortunate. Um, a couple of interesting things. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but what the hell, you know, my father... Um, for many many years always wanted my dad to come on a cruise uh, and he always said he is not getting on a boat he had to take a navy ship for two and a half weeks to go from wherever he was in uh, I think uh, in training to Okinawa Japan and he said that was it he was never stepping on a ship again <laughs> and he stayed true to his word the other thing that I always remember is a funny story involving him being in the Marines I mean there's a lot of stories I can't tell you but uh, one I can is that uh, he said the food was so bad that he uh, actually ordered a couple of cases of SpaghettiOs you know those little spaghetti rings and, and cans ordered a couple of cases of SpaghettiOs to uh, get him some good food when he was in the Marines and uh, so interesting but again it's Veterans Day so those of you that happen to serve or have families that have uh, members that have served uh, certainly do remember that day today don't really think it's really appropriate here to be talking about the NFL just because there's a game on the NFL Network tonight or college football because there's a game on uh, ESPN but again it's a sad commentary about our society that everything goes on and people are forgotten uh, last night, cashed in with a 10-dime uh, play on uh, Miami of Ohio. Another one of those situations, guys, where buying the hook absolutely paid off. I know a lot of people are, you know, think it's foolish to do it, uh, but, you know, if it continues to make me money buying the insurance, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to keep recommending that you do it as well. You saw last night Miami of Ohio. Every place in Vegas was 2.5. Most places offshore was 2.5, but a couple of the biggest books offshore, that game was a solid three all day yesterday. That 
They, of course, blew a big lead late and then had to uh, come up with a uh, game-saving field goal to win only by a margin of three. So we bought the half point. We got the win. And again, I'll say this again for you. Is there any difference losing when you're buying off a of three, losing at $1.10 or losing at $1.30? Sure, the difference is 20 cents on the dollar. It's $20 on every $100. Let me ask you this. For myself personally, that's five wins this year, NFL and college football combined, where the hook is paid off. Why wouldn't you do it? Anytime you have the ability to use the power of money to edge the odds in your favor, why not take advantage of it? Uh, as for tonight, uh, another 10-dime release on the Baltimore-Atlanta game. That is the best game on the board. That's going to be my only play. Yes, I thought about the Miami Heat, perhaps in revenge against the Boston Celtics. Another team I thought about tonight, seriously, the Golden State Warriors against a Chicago team that plays no defense. And the Warriors, this is a good team. Not a great team, but a good team that can score points on defenseless foes. But instead, I found the best bet on the board again tonight to be in the NFL. It is another 10-dime play. Uh, I have won four out of five 10-dime football releases over the past week and a half, including the Ravens over Miami in that home route this past Sunday as Sunday's best bet in the NFL. I'm 2-0 with 10-dime plays involving the Ravens this season, going with them in their week one opener at New York in that Monday night game when they upset the Jets 10-9. And of course, as I just told you last Sunday against the Dolphins, do I go with them again tonight? Because you've got two trends at play here tonight. Which one is going to pan out? The fact that the Ravens have covered eight straight in the series against Atlanta or the fact that Atlanta quarterback Matt Ryan is 17-1 straight up in his starts at the Georgia Dome. One of those pays off tonight. This game priced at minus one. My, uh, Atlanta favored by one at the Georgia Dome. That is my 10-dime best bet tonight. Now let's get to your free pick where I'm going to take East Carolina to take care of business and become bowl eligible with a win here tonight against UAB. What most people look at this game and they see the Pirates. That's East Carolina is that they got hammered, hammered by Navy in their last game last Saturday, 76 to 35, a game in which the midshipmen ran for 521 yards. Well, I got news for you guys. Navy was supposed to beat the hell out of East Carolina. That's what Navy's supposed to do when it's taking on an inferior lower class foe. And when I mean lower class, a team coming from the Conference USA that's just an average to mediocre team, that's what Navy should do in that game. However, you have to dig deeper than just the final score, and you have to excuse the dogs barking in the background. It's not like I can tell them to stop, nor will they listen. They're like kids, you know? Um, listen, you know, that game was tight. It was 28-21 to start the second half with Navy in front. It was a seven-point game. Problem was, East Carolina guys in that game uh, four of their five possessions in the third quarter, they turned the ball over, and in that third quarter, that's when Navy outscored them by 20 points, and that's more or less when they salted the game. Uh, you also have to excuse me with the sun here going in and out. That's why I look like I'm in Phantom of the Opera right now. We had good side, bad side here with the shade coming on me. Can't compensate for that, but just talk faster. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, this Carolina team, they can put points on the board in droves. Dominic Davis, the former Boston College transfer, really has solidified uh, the quarterback game for them, and Ruffin McNeil, their new first-year head coach, using that Texas Tech air raid uh, pass attack system. You know, Davis so far this season has uh, already um – Average 305 yards a game and 26 touchdowns on the year for an East Carolina offense that has averaged 36 points a game. In that game against Navy, he completed 43 of 65 passes for 413 yards and five touchdowns. Now, UAB tonight playing at home, but remember, UAB last week was laying 10 points at home against Marshall and got upset 31 to 17. That's the same Marshall team that East Carolina beat easily in Greenville by 27 points earlier this year, 37 10. You look at another couple of other common foes for these two teams. Both of them won at Southern Mississippi. Uh, East Carolina coming back from a big, big deficit to win by one point, and uh, so did um, UAB winning by one point as well, both in high-scoring games. You look at the UCF, US, USC. Central Florida game, UCF game that both of these two played. You know, where East Carolina at least gave Central Florida a run for their money, losing 49-35. UAB was crushed on the road as well by the Knights, 42-7. I think that these two teams are going in different directions. As I said, East Carolina gets a win tonight. They are bowl eligible. I'm going to go with East Carolina tonight. That is going to be your free selection. And again, the best bet on the board, the 10-dimer on your game between Baltimore and Atlanta. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again tomorrow.